Hardin Children's Medical Center, providing comprehensive pediatric care for Arizona's families. I finished my training in 1982, so we're getting close to 30 years or so. At that time, we knew we could cure some children. There were some tumors that could be cured, and we were just starting to get information coming through that maybe a third or so, 30, 40 percent of children um, could be treated, could be successfully treated for leukemia. Now we look at the numbers and with the availability of better treatment for some of the other cancers, better treatment for leukemia, and also better sort of second line treatments, the things we can go to if the first treatment is not successful, we now look that it now looks that close to 80 percent of children with cancer can be cured of it. Hi, my name is Alexis. I'm 12 years old and I survived leukemia cancer. One thing that's been nice to see is the improvement in the, in the outcomes. The fact that things that really literally used to be, we would be giving a fatal pronouncement, now we've got treatment for these things. I'm 15 years old and I survived leukemia. In those days, if a child had a leukemia come back and they didn't have a brother or sister who was a match, which most children, most children don't have such a match, we didn't have much we could do. Most of my last 20 years or so have been involved in doing bone marrow transplants and to be able to kind of have a second chance at curing a cancer or to have a much better chance at curing a cancer that previously had a low, low likelihood of being cured, that's been pretty exciting. My name is Chandler and I'm 16 and I've survived ALL, acute lymphoblastic leukemia for six years. Young children often manage to not remember any of this. Most people become aware of the fact that um, they had to go through something tough and it was uncomfortable and it's in some ways an unpleasant memory. Hi, I'm Hannah. Ten years ago I survived leukemia cancer and I'm 15 years old. Most children are, who are successfully treated with the cancer really tend to bounce back and live pretty normal lives. Hi, my name is Jameson. I am four years old. I had normal blastoma cancer. Curiously, it turns out that a lot of the medicines we use to control nausea and vomiting give you a little bit of amnesia and can sometimes make it so you're not aware of, 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 uh, of what you've gone through. My name is Drayden. I'm eight years old, and I survived B-cell lymphoma cancer. Often you take a child who was perfectly healthy a month or two earlier, these things come on pretty quickly. Even when our treatment's successful, certainly, uh, certainly impact, has an impact on people's lifestyle and makes for big changes. And plus having the threat of a cancer hanging over, uh, hanging over a child is, uh, is often devastating. My name is Eric Feld. I'm 16 years old and I survived undifferentiated sarcoma. We've been very conscious of what are the late effects of treatment. Um, some children who've needed in particular radiation treatment or sometimes under some circumstances bone marrow transplants can have effects on their growth and some of their hormones, sometimes even effects on, de on development and going through puberty. We're very conscious of these things. We have specifically avoided treatments that we think may affect in some way growth, but sometimes you just have to live with it. If somebody has a brain tumor and needs the radiation treatment, we may just have to live with the fact that they won't grow normally unless we give them medicines, and we've also gotten medicines now that, that help with those things. My name is Cassidy. I'm 12 years old and I survived just this germinoma cancer, which is ovarian cancer. Also true, we're certainly very conscious of things that would affect intelligence. We try to avoid certain treatments in infants and young children, but sometimes this may be the only way you can save somebody's life. And if that means losing a little bit of IQ, not functioning quite so well in school, 
think most parents wind up feeling that it was worth the uh, worth the expense, worth worth the worth the worth the investment. My name is Jalen Kent. I'm 10 years old, and I survived Ewing sarcoma cancer. The toughest point comes for me when you know you can't fix something, when you know it's not going to be treatable. That's a hard one, and sometimes with bone marrow transplant, you'll see it coming over the course of a few days. You'll see some complication that you know people almost never get over. Same can be true with some kind of combination of things, but sometimes in certain circumstances, a, a, a cancer coming back or perhaps coming back multiple times, sometimes that just signals you're not going to be able to successfully treat somebody. You do what you can, you appreciate their time, you give the parents as many options as possible for what they and the child would like to do, but that's a tough one when, not necessarily the day you lose the child, but at least from our point of view, the day you know you're not going to be able to beat the cancer. My name is Alex Hart, and I'm 20 years old, and I survived acute lymphoblastic leukemia. I guess I was enough of an optimist in 1982 that if you'd asked me what it would be like in 2011, I would say, oh, we'll have great treatments, people come in, it'll take about two weeks, and everything will be hunky-dory, and we'll cure a little, about 100%. So I have to say, I kind of had the expectation that we would be doing very well now. I have to admit, I was hoping it was going to be better, and we were going to be a lot smarter at what we do. My name is Tommy, I'm 17 years old and I survived T-cell leukemia and it sucked. I think a lot of our patients don't really view themselves as victims. They just sort of see it as an obstacle they have to overcome. I would say most of, most of our patients wind up being pretty comfortable, pretty well adjusted, sort of understand that they went through a rough time and after a couple years go by when the risk of the cancer coming back has diminished, um, most of them go on to lead normal productive lives.